News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. And a very good morning to you. This is Newsline, live as always from the News First studios in Dawson Street in Colombo. And uh, I couldn't help but notice it's, uh, it's another beautiful day on this Paradisian island, Sri Lanka. Lovely. It's absolutely super charming. And um, we're so glad to be alive and to be able to enjoy our country. Brilliant. And uh, this morning, on this wonderful day, uh, we have with us the former Auditor General of the Republic of Sri Lanka, Mr. Sarat Mayadune. Very good morning to you. Very good morning. Thank you, sir, for being on the program. And uh, we really do appreciate your time. Uh, yesterday, you were on Pathikada at the ungodly hour at 6 o'clock. But uh, Mr. Jayasekhar assures me that there has been an excellent response to that program as well. Yes, so, good. Thank you. Thank you. Now then, um, um, uh, Mr. Mayadune, finally, we have the National Audit Act in place. Yeah. I say finally because it went through so many uh, in and out of uh, Parliament, uh, I think 24 or 25 times. Um, so finally, Actually, it's mostly that was before the before it <coughs> to the <coughs> before it submitted to the Parliament. I see during the um, cabinet. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, 24, yeah. 25 times to cabinet. Yeah. Indeed, yes. Yeah. So, are you are you now very happy about it? People, some people say that this is a watered down bill. Yeah. Certainly, yes, to some extent. Mm. But when you see the overall picture, yeah, it is an excellent one. We right. have to appreciate it very highly, due to so many reasons. Okay, and uh, are you are you uh, are you saying that? Because now it's passed and it's become law, and so you have no other choice but to say, well, yes, it is, it's, it's, it's okay. Or are you saying it out of conviction? Do you really believe that it is okay? I believe it is very good. Yeah. There are there's some, some room for expansion, no improvement. So there are a few adupadus now? There are, someone can say so, okay. but... Even without attending those things, this act can be used for the better control of the entire state mechanism. Right. So the overall position, it's, um, it, it's, uh, it's good. Very good. And uh, Mr. Madune, who are the parties, uh, who are the stakeholders, who are the parties affected by this National Audit uh, Act? Mainly we can speak of the state audit right. sector. Okay. They are on the general list there, right. national audit, <laughs> state, uh, our national audit uh, services there, yeah. uh, then um, audit commission is there, yeah. uh, audit officials are there, yeah. that is one of the main set. Right. The other sector is the public officials or bureaucracy. Right. They are also well, uh, I, I will say, Bound by law as well as privilege. Ah, yes. Okay. Then, <coughs> other uh, the main party actually. Yeah. The general public. I see. General public is getting the benefit to a massive extent if this works properly. Right. The other two parties connected are the government. Okay. The government is bound yes. as well as privilege. The right. parliament is bound as well as privilege. privilege. Therefore, we can speak of five sectors mainly. So, which is the general public, parliament, government, the state audit, and bureaucracy. That is correct. So, <coughs> which do you think is the most uh, the most benefited by this? Is it it's, is it the state audit and the bureaucracy? General public. The, the general reason public. actually, the state machinery. Yeah established to serve the people. Yeah. The state audit main role is to look at how the service delivery is done mm. by the state machinery. Right. Therefore, any weakness, yeah. wastage, corruption, fraud, anything related to the delivery of service to general public yeah. Is the area yeah. where the public should pay their attention. 
therefore pub, general public actually should get the benefit as the audit general or state audit will audit that means check and re- review check and report yeah. to the people through parliament mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. even the act requires these observations should be uh, webcasted right therefore finally the people will get the benefit right to know how the areas were uh, arranged yeah. how the services were delivered yeah. how the uh, weaknesses were uh, identified yeah and uh, mostly in other countries the recommendations very very important part mm. but uh, for that one the state audit should have uh, more uh, resources mm-hmm. right now actually so you are saying it right now it's a limit the resources are limited that is correct i see when you say resources mainly the uh, staff mm-hmm. highly qualified right competent yes staff should be there mm. right now uh, to my understand all the staff audit staff yeah is recruited to the <coughs> audit are account <coughs> accountancy oriented officials i see i see when you look at other countries yes accountancy oriented staff recruited is very very limited but mostly they are from other disciplines mm-hmm. like engineers uh, lawyers mm-hmm. bankers mm-hmm. managers so many fields other disciplines right but they are <coughs> trained they are actually educated into accountancy field after they are recruited mm. but ours if we try to recruit other discipline people to state on it today it will be a failure as the remuneration packages yeah. are very 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 weak therefore they, it is not attractive enough. Oh. other thing though they come they will not retain in the they will not wait they will go out because it's also uh, underpayment is fertile ground yeah, yeah. for for corruption that helps so in addition to that uh, i spoke of the discipline yeah. especially you see today most of the corruptions yeah are actually directly connected to the it field computers i see, I see. when someone <coughs> actually manipulate yeah something yeah the auditor should be on a better hand yeah to to study it analyze it and grab the information necessary to uh, come to a conclusion right for that one yeah that <coughs> uh, purpose their capacity competency should be very high for right. that one you can't get <coughs> them for peter it's amazing what you say uh, mr madden but uh, here at the capital maharaja group yeah uh, i think uh, 27 companies the aud- uh, audit division is independent and the audit division only reports to our chairman yeah there is no in between yeah it's very clear yeah. so bit like what you said here also the independence is guaranteed there but independence has so many branches or sectors not only the finance uh, <coughs> functional independence i think you meant the functional independence yes but auditor general one or state audit what matters mainly is the financial independence as well as the administrative independence so ah. administrative independence when you have to depend on some other authority yes when <coughs> financial independence when you have to depend on other institutions yes your functional independence definitely get curtailed right so now where does the money come from now this constitution after 19th amendment right uh <coughs> audit service commission is introduced that is in 2000 uh, may 15th of 2015 right. that is 3 3 years back right 
it introduced under article 153 that's in the constitution in the constitution that is correct right that commission established to strengthen the audit, audit general general audit that means state audit yeah and unfortunately they failed to uh, deliver their services until the day the act is passed there is just one reason that is this uh, constitution article 153 yes uh, b2 says yeah the parliament shall subject to the <coughs> paragraph 1 yeah provide by law for meeting of the commission not only that they say the establishment of the sri lanka state audit service that also was not uh, fulfilled up to the day this act passed then and such other matters connected and uh, will <coughs> with and uh, incidental there too that I means see. that means actually this is passed yes but it was not empowered to meet without meeting they can't take any decision so for them to meet they needed to have the act passed yeah which that is why yeah. uh, it was so important to pass this that is one may, one of the main reason for getting this act passed i'm uh, i'm pleased to say uh, that i can now fully see uh, the benefits of uh, like uh, our media division uh, yeah. news first search uh, shakti tv1 um we continuously campaigned and uh, kept it in the public in the public domain yeah and it was a news item all the time up 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 front there yeah to we campaigned long hard and tirelessly yeah um and and, and i'm very pleased and i'm yeah. proud to be yeah. part of that process appreciate it you know uh, and and that's very 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 good because yeah. uh, now, so now we are finally but then uh, mr maidun i i'm always going on a little bit about money yes um the national audit commission so they so in a way it became active uh, in 2016 yeah but it was not empowered until this bill was passed so now now yeah. it's an act yes. so in between how much i mean they they appointed uh, people and so on and i think they spent around uh, in uh, i've heard around 60 million rupees uh, yeah. so who's responsible for that 60 million that is the biggest question that i think we have to actually answer for that one i think uh, we can uh we can actually address uh few parties right one is the parliament yeah one is the cabinet right one is the constitutional council uh and one is the state audit i see the parliament knows that when the act passing get delayed yes the commission yeah is not empowered to act. I see. Therefore this act is not a baby of the cabinet. Right. It is the duty and the function of the parliament to get the act passed. But unfortunately the <coughs> ready made uh, bill national audit bill was in the hands of the cabinet and parliament I think yeah uh, did not work properly to get it into their hand right. and it was left on the cabinet although the cabinet took it as you correctly told yeah it was revised 26 times after the uh, uh, constitution amendment passed right 26 times this was originated by the audit department mm mm-hmm. and uh, polished by the legal draftman right as well as the attorney general therefore it was ready right. the that product should have come into parliament and parliament should have asked that yes and parliament should give the cabinet to opportunity to uh, revise at the parliament level then the things are going to hands up right now actually these things are amended right i will i will tell you one thing that is that uh, even the <coughs> the auditor general's discretion or power should be very high not only in sri lanka in other countries 
Uh, now, Mr. Uh, Mr. Madunik, let's stop there for just a few seconds while we go for that break that we sorry. promised. And uh, this is News 9. Don't go away. After all, we're listening to something very important indeed. News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukutali. And welcome back to Newsline. And we're in conversation with uh, Mr. Sarat Mayadun, the former Auditor General of the Republic of Sri Lanka. Now, that's, this is very uh, <coughs> interesting what you're saying. Yeah. Actually, the Auditor General have to have uh, sufficient uh, discretion and authority over his powers, duties and functions. Mm. Mm. The Act originally, mm. I think even in nine, uh, 2017 August, yeah. under this one, it said, the Auditor General or any person authorized by him in carrying out an audit shall, this is the important portion, mm. as far as possible and as may be necessary examine whether the list is given. Right. Final one, this discretionary authority, that is yeah. as far as possible and as may be necessary examine whether. Yeah. When that portion is dropped, yeah and the balance remain, yeah. Auditor General is bound under this one for so many things without paying any attention for the possibility as the necessity. Right. Therefore, he has a limited resources. Mm -hmm. When all the things are uh, legally required, mm. it is a very difficult task for him to fulfill as well as he will be punished finally for not complying the requirements as this requires, the act requires, mm -hmm. all the parties who are bound by this law yeah. should follow the, uh, will be taken to courts. Mm -hmm. Therefore, this discretionary authority is taken out. I can't understand why it is so. Now, there's, uh, yes, uh, uh, there's, there's another, there's another uh, uh, sort of uh, thought process here. Uh, you know, when you're talking about the funding, yeah. um, every public body yeah. mm, will, by law passed by Parliament, pay an annual service fee on a prearranged basis. Yeah. Implementation of that system yeah. will then solve the problem of funds. Yeah. What do you think about that? That is the, Before that, shall we uh, go back to yes. what we were discussing? The, yes. The Parliament should be answerable for delaying this one. The cabinet took so many time, so many uh, months yeah. for amending yeah. at got delay. That is one reason for this uh, establishing the Audit Service Commission. commission. The other matter, the Constitutional Council, they yeah. appointed this commission yeah. before passing this uh, act. Mm. Very clearly, they should know the act, <laughs> the, uh, the commission cannot meet Without the that, act. Without that. Yeah. But however they pass. Therefore, when they passed, when they appointed the commission, it happened them to get into a... So do, do you think they didn't know, realize, or they were just uh, not fully, uh, didn't have sufficient knowledge? I am not sure about the actual course, course, but it happened. But so. it has happened. Yeah. Therefore, who is accountable for this wastage? Yeah. Even the Auditor General has to answer. Has to answer that question. Yes, yeah, as he's the chairman as well as a member of the commission. Right. And <coughs> Audit has to report on these things. Mm. They have to report this as a waste mm. for spending such a huge money yeah. out of the general public purse. Right. For this purpose, uh, without such. Uh, you are asking about the <coughs> in, uh, um, implementation or applying yeah. the public purse. Yes. Under our Article 148, yeah. the Parliament is the body which shall have the full control over public finance. Yes. Uh, as per That's from the time of independence. From the indi even before that, right? It is actual Parliament was established after that. Yeah. Therefore, they were the body. Uh, uh, accountable for that purpose. Right. However, there was no parliamentary control uh, by <coughs> uh, through a uh, parliamentary act or statute mm. 
mm-hmm. for this control this was actually <coughs> identified proposed by the uh, 12th report of the public accounts committee in mm-hmm. 1985 mm-hmm. Uh, under the chairmanship of wpb disanaik honorable that committee required the parliament shall have a, uh, public finance Co- control act to control the public finance mm-hmm. but so far such a act is not passed such right. a thing was drafted in year 2002 yeah. but it was not materialized right N- now these recommendations are absorbed into the audit audit act mm. therefore that is a great thing that means public finance controlled by the parliament has become a legal or parliamentary ex coverage under the new audit act there mm. are officers especially uh, chief accounting officers that is the secretaries of the ministry yes. and the heads of department that they are called accounting officers yes. are bound by this act right to deliver certain services most of them those things are actually uh, looks not reasonable unless they are provided the capacity i see therefore they are bound but the facilities are not given to them mm. i can read yeah. some things actually i am surprised to see how they can deliver the services without sufficient capacity the thing that they are <coughs> they when have when, to you search, mean, when you mean capacity capacity means mainly they have to have super system right. to ensure for example <coughs> for example internal audit or internal audit mm. under this one the chief accounting officer accounting officer are bound to ensure yeah the effectiveness of the Uh, internal section and improvements yeah related to but yeah. for that one internal auditor when when internal auditor is uh, uh, um, appointed by the um, uh, authority they have to have a proper <coughs> training proper qualifications mm. proper experience and they are imp- they are, should be empowered also yeah but to my understanding most of them are just not under the top of the institution but under middle of the middle rank of the uh, rank yes, yes therefore they are not actually fit to ensure though they are legally bound to deliver the services i see i see that's very anomalous situation yes uh, we have a viewer from candy who says the surcharge provision is to be decided upon by the chief accounting officer or the minister secretary however he or she has to act on directions of the cabinet of ministers will he not be therefore influenced i think <coughs> the it is uh, actually misinterpreted right the <coughs> uh, surcharge amount and the fact is determined by the <coughs> by the audit and conveyed by the audit service commission to the chief accounting officer right however act does not require the audit commission or the audit to <coughs> name the parties connected ah it it is in the hands of the chief accounting officer he has to study and identify the parties related he may be a politician even right not only an official we be be politician even and issue the surcharge sur- sur- notice and then after reviewing the things the um, surcharge certificate yes. and recover yeah he he may be under cabinet direction but when the act requires act is about the cabinet decisions yeah. therefore he is bound to collect it so he's From, bound to ensure implementation there therefore cabinet can't uh, supersede the parliamentary authority right. therefore parliament use the authority to the state audit to inform the relevant um, chief accounting officer about the amount of surcharge mm-hmm. it is up to him to get it surcharge 
from the relevant parties. Therefore, they are, earlier it was under the proposal required Auditor General to decide all these things and to deliver the surcharge uh, notice as well as the certificate. But when out of four parties, the <coughs> the auditor, mm. that is the witness, then the <coughs> uh, judge, that is the Auditor General, then the <coughs> uh, complaint, he is also Auditor General, three parties are in the hands of the Auditor General mm. and the other party is answerable. Now that is splitted. Therefore, right. now it is much better. Mm. Imposing the amount is decided by the state audit yes. and implementation and recovery left over to the chief accounting officer. And the chief accounting officer is required by law, Bob. legally obliged yes. to, to recover. Yeah. So, so that's the correct that is interpretation. Correct. Yeah. So, so I see. So, so now finally. After all these years, yeah. now we have that uh, we, we have compliance in uh, with the constitutional um, provision that Parliament shall have full control over state uh, st state expenditure, not only expenditure, state income also and revenue. Income. And that is revenue. therefore the Parliament shall have the full control. The Auditor General is the constitutional machinery yeah. assisting the Parliament not only for having the <coughs> public finance control yeah. but also the uh, activities of the entire executive arm right and under article 422 yeah. it requires the cabinet to be answerable to and uh, responsible to the parliament yeah and the auditor general the <coughs> recognized constitutional authority to assist in the parliament to question the cabinet why this is not done? Why this is done in this manner? Therefore, to demand the accountability from the cabinet under Article 42.2, yeah. the Auditor General assists the Parliament. In addition to that, uh, Auditor General assists the Parliament under Article 148 to have the full control of public finance. Therefore, Auditor General's uh, assistance is actually under two main constitutional articles i see i see and um, ju just as we come to the uh, towards the end of our program uh, i want to ask you how does this uh, uh, how does this impact on the on um, companies or institutions like for example sri lankan airlines earlier it was under the constitution under english one <coughs> companies uh, uh, state companies under corporations yeah. are there, but under single one, it was state companies under companies was in, under the single one. Oh. Therefore, there was a big problem that is also clarified under this act. Now, any government owned uh, company is subject to the audit under this. Uh, ah, so that's very important. Yes. Any government owned company, yes. even if that is company has been established under the Companies Act 2007. Yes, yeah, yeah. If it is over 50% of the shareholding under the government, yes. Ah, over 50% to the state, then the Auditor General has... Yeah, yeah. Can uh, but in addition to that, uh, this Act provides that in case Auditor General thinks yeah. that um, government money or assets are in the process of public company even, yeah. with, the, uh, with the approval of the Magistrate or the general can go to any private company and see whether the government funds are kept in their hand in unduly manner. Okay. It is a new uh, authority. It was not under the constitution, but act covers that also. That that is a very very important uh, opportunity to safeguard the uh, rights of the general public. Wonderful. Do you know? Um uh, I, I want to say this, that if this has been an extremely revealing uh, program. I'm so ever so glad that you come here and clarified some matters uh, and, uh, and shared those with, uh, with, uh, with our viewers. Uh, Thank you very much. Yes, I am <coughs> offered this opportunity to uh, share some thoughts with you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's our great pleasure to Thank be able much. to do this for and on behalf of the people which is what 
uh, News First is all about. Thank you, uh, Sarat Mayaduna, for, Thank you. for giving us such clarity. Thank you very Thank much you. indeed. And uh, that's the way it was from uh, Newsline on this uh, brilliant day, Wednesday, July 25th, 2018. Take care and God bless. Thank <laughs> you.